Hey gearheads, welcome back to the channel. That's right, it's been some time since you've actually seen this sucker here and well, it's dead. Well, it's not really dead, it's going dead dead, but it needs a battery. We need a battery for our tea bucket. Battery in here is seven years old and well, it's really expensive to change these and if this has anything in common with a Chevy Corvette, it's like five, six hundred dollars to put a battery in this sucker. So I'm gonna show you the right way to change a battery on a Pontiac Solstice, Saturn Sky, Opal GT, or pretty much any car GM made that looked like this. Now, like I was saying, there's a few ways that this can be addressed. The battery itself is actually behind this fender and it's down low here and well, it's underneath the fuse box here and all this other fun stuff. And there's a few YouTube videos that tell you to open the door and pull out these two bolts here and pull this fender off, pull the bracket off, pull the wheel liner out, pull the wheel off. And that's actually what some of the GM dealers are doing. But there is another way. So again, we're gonna get it jumped. We'll get it over to the garage and we're gonna go actually from the front. So there's a lot of information on YouTube about how to change the battery in the Pontiac Solstice. And it's gonna be the same for the Saturn Sky, Opal GT, all that fun stuff. But the battery is placed nice and deep in the engine compartment here. And I'm sure the engineers at GM, the sick and sadistic way they think, we're laughing at whoever gets to, you know, opportunity to change that. Now, a lot of the videos tell you to take this side panel off, this side fender, pop the door open, remove all these bolts back here. This comes off, this bracket comes off, and the battery comes out. That's actually not the right way to do it. Now, if you do want to do the other ways that people are talking about, you can try to pry a wrench in there and ding up your door getting those brackets undone or trying to go in from the other side. But we do need to jack it up. The lift points on these Kappas is just like the Chevy Corvette. There's only four real places that you can actually lift this thing. If you don't lift it correctly, you're probably like a lot of people who own these where the sides underneath are actually dented and damaged where the dealerships didn't do it correctly. Go ahead and get your jack under and you're looking for your first lift point, which is just gonna be a single plate, which you'll see. There's four of them on the vehicle. When you do this, you try to use somewhat of a low profile jack. That way it doesn't damage your fender here. This one just barely clears, so it'll work perfect for what we're doing. All right, so there's a few ways you can do this. You can just use your normal tire iron, or you can use an impact driver. Well, wrench, whatever you want to call it. So now that you got your tire off, you got a bolt down here, and you should have two bolts here unless you have the body pins, and then you have another one right here. These are gonna be the only ones that we're gonna remove for right now. So take your number seven, go ahead and pull that out there. And then you're going to do the same thing right down here. And you can use a trim tool for these. It works best. Some people will use a standard head sc screwdriver, but you end up mauling these up when you do that. Go ahead and pull your wheel liner back and around. And you're going to tuck it right behind your brake caliper. Just right there. Depending on what model year you're working with, you're gonna remove those two bolts right down in there. So for this one, it's just a number 10. And hopefully they're not that loose like those were. You wanna look right under here and you're gonna have one more number 10. So go ahead and pull that one out here. Once you pull that out, this entire bracket's gonna slide right out. And then you can pull that bracket out just like that and go ahead and set that aside. Next two things we need to do is remove both of the terminal cables here. Now, depending on what model year you have, it might be a little different, but for mine, it's gonna be a 10. If your car was owned by a bunch of teenagers before you bought it and it's had about 10 different owners, it might, might not be a 10. Now for your negative, you're not gonna be able to get in there with a full size ratchet itself. so. You're gonna need something smaller. An electric driver is not gonna work either in here just because it's so tight, unless you actually want to remove the fuse box. I know you're getting antsy here, but we got one more bolt that we need to pull out and this is actually what holds in the battery itself. What we'll do here now is we will just slide this battery out. And again, it may take a little bit of maneuvering, but it'll slowly come out just like that. Make note of the orientation on this one because you'll slide it 
right back in in the same spot, just like that. And then you have your rubber holder here, which will connect down on the battery. So no need to run you through how to put all this back together. It's just the opposite of what you did. You're going to put the fender bracket on, all that fun stuff. Make sure down in here that your actual terminals here are, are nice and tight. You start hitting bumps and stuff, this starts getting loose, you're going to run into the same issue of this not starting here. What I did learn down here is besides the clear coat that's actually starting to come off on the wheels, which we're going to address that in a nice, fun, entertaining video sometime in the future, I had to use just a bunch of Frankenstein lug nuts down here. Impact wouldn't actually take these off and had to resort to a breaker bar and some other very cruel techniques to get some of these off. So did order some replacements for that there. Now, as for the T-bucket, we do have an extra battery now. All right, and then for our old battery here, we pulled out of the Pontiac, got ourselves a T-bucket donor battery, which when it's placed under charge, it'll work, but it's only a temporary fix for this, but let's get back to the Pontiac. All right, so now that we've got the battery in, need to go ahead and start her up, make sure everything runs. We're good to go. No check engine lights, nice. Well, gearheads, you made it to the end of the video, and well, it's pretty rare that people actually make it to the end of a how-to video. Not common, actually, at all, especially when you're installing something as exciting as a battery in this old Pontiac. But I'll leave the information for the battery I used, the El Cheapo version from Walmart, in the description below, as well as all the tools that were used. It's pretty straightforward. It should only take you about an hour, unless some yoked-out meth head gorilla. Put your wheel lugs on, then you're probably going to have some trouble with that. But in the meantime... That's all I got for you guys. Make sure you check the community tab for updates on the channel. Hit the like and subscribe. See you next week.